This is the plaintiff, Anthony Gino Martinson. He says he and the defendant's daughter were very close, and the defendants weren't happy about their relationship, and they made up stories about him. They even went as far as trying to get a restraining order against him to prevent him from seeing their daughter. He had to travel 250 miles by bus to court to dispute their false claims and to clear his good name. This cost him time, hotel, and travel expenses, and he feels they owe him the $343.20 he spent getting these false charges dismissed. These are the defendants, Darlene and Stephen Sparks. Stephen says his 16-year-old daughter was being brainwashed by the plaintiff, and he made up stories about him and his ex-wife in an attempt to kidnap her away from them. Bottom line, the plaintiff is 23 years old, his daughter is a minor, and any trouble the plaintiff finds himself in is his own doing, and they owe nothing. They're accused of making up lies. The defendants have filed a countersuit for $564.54 for money is spent on searching for their daughter. All parties, please, is your right hand. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Anthony Gino Martinson? Yes, ma'am. You are suing Darlene Sue Sparks and Stephen Sparks? for $343.20 in expenses that you had to incur when you contested a restraining order, which ultimately was not uh, granted. Correct. All right, it, actually, the way it works in Florida is that you apply for a temporary on your own without the other side present, and then in 15 days, it goes to a full hearing to see if it's gonna become permanent. In this case, the permanent wasn't granted. The temporary was, the permanent wasn't. So you're suing for the expenses, and they're counterclaiming against you expenses that they incurred looking for their daughter. All right, talk to me and tell me what's going on. Um, I actually met their daughter during high school. Um, I was a high school mentor while I was in the high school for the middle, middle school students. Uh, she and I kind of... It, you it were was in high like school, a, she was in middle school? Yeah, it was a state-funded boarding school, Florida School for the Deaf and Blind. Um, it was... You are visually impaired? Yes, I'm legally How blind. How impaired are you? Uh, totally blind in my right eye and don't see very well out of my left. And she is visually impaired? Yes. Okay, go ahead. She was in the, it was like a big brother, little brother kind of program, but uh, with the way the school worked, because all the students were residing at the school, um, they really didn't do the gender issue of male versus female, female versus male, male, and, and it, was, it was one of the things because it was supervised by staff. Uh, it was also religious programs and as well as the school band that I was like a older brother kind of mentoring figure towards her. Uh, it extended to after I graduated because of things that she was talking to me about, uh, abusive situations that she claimed that she was in. What kind of abusive uh, situation? Her father, who she was living with at the current time, um, was emotionally and verbally abusive towards her. What's emotionally her. and verbally abusive? Give me an example. Uh, there's actually been a time where I was on the phone with her and he was yelling and cussing and screaming at her. Did he know uh, you were on the phone? She was on the phone with me and he came in the room and just ah, went clear okay. off on her. All right, all right, I got it. So mm -hmm. go ahead. Um, and he said she, what? And I quote, word, the word for word, what came out of his mouth was, you're a worse, worthless piece of shit. You might as well go ahead and kill yourself because nobody cares. Okay. So go on. Uh, and that's just one example of many I've heard. Um, Give me the other as, examples. Um, every single time she makes a friend with someone, um, not just with me, but with other people, her dad has been very, very, very taken back by it. Uh, he makes every attempt to remove that person. Who else did he attempt to remove besides you? Um, a friend of hers that's also a graduate from the school who's actually even older than I am. How old is she? She's 16. How old are you? I'm 21. All right. Um, when do you first meet him? I first met him, I believe it was around April. He, he comes to the house and then they go out. We gave, we gave her a time to be home, which was 9 p.m. Um, she came in the door at 12.06. And then from that point on, up until now, this man has made both of our lives a nightmare. Is Rachel dating him? Yes. Is she, are you dating her? No. Ma'am, I- She live with you? No. 
Where's she living? She's living with her father currently. What, did she ever live with you? No. So how has he made your, your lives a living hell? The first time we really had a problem. You know, I, I saw issues that it was not right. He was living in his car with another gentleman on the streets in, in my city, in Green Cove Springs, Florida. You know, uh, it, it just there was conversations that, that I just wasn't comfortable with. Rachel would sneak out and go see them and not tell me what she was doing. And that wasn't okay with me. And one time they came and pulled up on the street at about 11 o'clock at night and went to the window and I texted him and I said, listen. How did you have his number in your phone to text him? It was through, through Facebook. Okay. I said, listen, under no circumstances at any time are you to come to my house at night, not, be, not announce yourself that you're coming or be invited and go to my daughter's window. It's unacceptable. How did you know that he was at your daughter's window? Because he had signed on to my daughter's iPhone account, and I could track where he was at because he signed on, because I had a tracking system on her. Okay. And since he signed on to her account, I could tell where he was. Oh, and my goodness. actually, in that situation... Why didn't you just walk over to the window? Why, like, if he's at the window, I, instead of texting him, because I know what my father because, would have done. Because I, I, because I would be in a different court right now. And no, I know. But you can. <laughs> there's a happy medium between texting him. If you could control yourself enough to text him, you wouldn't be in another court. Why can't you walk into that room and uh, confront the issue like I was just curious? I just, I, I just... All right, so go on. Okay, so his reply to me... Would you like me to read it? Yeah. I don't take orders from you. I am a, an adult, and you are not my father. You are nothing but scum on my foot. I suggest quit worrying about me and start worrying about yourself. You've dug a pretty deep grave for yourself. Now I'm going to have you lie in it. Have fun. Did you give that to the police? Yes. What happened? They, they said that <laughs> I needed to file a restraining order. Is that when the restraining order was filed? I no. Okay. I filed a restraint when I filed my when I filed mine, it was denied because the judge in, in Green Cove said that I didn't present enough, but it was denied. But what can do you prejudice. have the temporary restraining order that you applied for? Yes. Do you have that physically here? Yes, I do. Oh, oh who applied for it? Was it you, ma'am? I did. Okay. How long did your daughter live with her? A couple months. A couple months, yeah, a couple and months. And then she went back to you? No. No. What, where did she, she go went from to pick there? Her up. She went to pick her up at school one day. She refused to leave school with her. He went, she went and met him, and she ran away. Your daughter. And yes. when did that happen? It was the, the week of, like, the 6th or 7th of, of the October. So then, because Rachel has no ID... Well, she's a minor. She's right. 16 years old. She's a kid. Exactly. All right, All right so what did you do? I, I, I went to search for her. And, and I'm, I'm, I, drove, I drove all over Fort Myers for two days. In the meantime, he got a bus ticket. They both got a bus ticket and went to Daytona. Meantime, the sheriff's department, who put her out as a missing person, right? they got her, her, well, they had her phone number. They got his phone number, and they tracked their phones and coordinated with the Daytona I mean, you, police. You were able to track those still, too, or no, did they, they no. took off location she, services? No, she, in fact... The plaintiff and her went and sold my phone that I owned, a $600, $700 iPhone, and... What, 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 what's going on? She's not your girlfriend, you say, right? Correct. Okay, so, because if she was your girlfriend, I could understand. I'm missing what's going on. What business do you have having a minor go with you instead of her parents, who's 16? Like, what business is this of yours? You're a grown man. Why is that happening? She, the only explanation I could think of is that you're dating her. That I understand. But I don't understand, if you're not dating her, where you come off thinking at the age of 21 that you're a better parent than her actual parents. So I don't get it. You're going to have to elucidate me here. To start things, the reason she went to her mother's to begin with is because she was Baker acted out of her father's house for, for attempting to commit suicide because of the alleged things that I explained to you that he did. All you explained to me that he did was one day, according to you, you heard him walk in and say, you're worthless and you should kill yourself. By so the way, I never gave I've you a heard. chance to respond to that. 
Did you ever that say that? That is an absolute lie. Okay. I, because I, a guy me, who spends two days, day and night, looking for his daughter doesn't sound like somebody who doesn't care about his daughter. You know what I mean? But yeah. go ahead. Who, I don't know who you are, but did you just talk from your yes, seat? Yes, don't do that. I'll give you a, a please stand up, and, in a, and, when, and I'll address you in a moment if you're a witness. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, not to mention the other issue that I never managed to get to is the, the bed bugs that have been in his house for over two and a half years. So you're a better parent? Um, that have never been treated. So every DCF house, and let's assume account. that there are bed bugs. You should be able to, to take with you any minor in a house that there are bed bugs. Anybody who has bed bugs, that minor is subject to your jurisdiction. On Sounds to me like you take a little jurisdiction license. She didn't run away. She was told that she needed to pack her things that night because when she got home from school the next day, she was going to have to find somewhere else to go. She told me that she could call her DCF caseworker and informed them, I'm not going to question her. I have no reason to believe that she's lying to me. She told you that she called her DCF worker and told him or her what? Told this person that... She, that she had been kicked out of the place that she was living with her mother. Okay. And that she was going to go find her way up back to the Daytona area where she knew that I had friends that she could stay with. And what did her caseworker say about that? As far as she told me, her caseworker what said as long case as she has What did her caseworker say about that? Because I can't imagine the caseworker fine. being fine the, with that. The caseworker helped us in our, our, our challenge to find her. Where'd you find her? Found her in Daytona. How long? Where do you live? I live in, in the Jacksonville area, Green Coast. Oh, you Springs. live way north. All right. Yeah. So you find her in Daytona, and how is it you find her through the phone records? Through the phone. Yeah. The, the police track their phones. And then what do the police do when they find her in Daytona? The police served him with the restraining order, the temporary restraining order, served him, and took her into custody. Didn't arrest, but just took her into custody, and called me. I was in Fort Myers searching for her. And I just laid down uh, because I'd been up for many hours. And they said, okay, you can come get her. You need to come get her. I got up, left my hotel room that I paid, just paid for, and drove to Daytona all night. Uh, got there, picked her up, took her home. But Did your daughter ever tell you he was her boyfriend? Or that is absolutely not involved we, in this case? We found evidence. There's used condoms in her room where he was caught after he was kicked out mm -hmm. of the house. He snuck in. Okay. Let me, uh, who are you, sir? My name is Greg. I'm a witness, and they're painting a pretty ugly picture of my friend Anthony. Okay. And how old are you? I am 44 years old. I live in Georgia. You're 40 what? 44. And Rachel's what? 16. I'm okay. on the phone talking to her. Okay. okay. I have been giving her advice when she first was living with her dad's house after I first spoke to her the first time through Anthony on a three-way call. But you been, didn't even meet her yet. I have not met her. You've, yeah, to this day you haven't met her. I have not met her. I have never seen her. Okay. Okay. She told me about the things that were going on. Okay. You, somebody want to tell me? Okay. The house is, infe according to her, the house is infested with bed bugs and have been for, for, for a couple years. He bullies her, yells and screams at her. I have been on the phone many a time and heard him come in the room yelling and screaming at her, telling her to get off the phone, just cussing at her, everything. Cussing at her like what? Get off the phone. Just, just being, you know, profanity and everything else. And can I just ask you a question? Are you a parent? No, I'm not. Are you a parent, Anthony? No. Okay, and and I understand okay. where you're. No, I, no, you don't understand where I'm coming from. I have a 16-year-old at home, and I'm trying to imagine if there's a world where a 44-year-old man is going to tell me that I abuse my kid because I tell her to get off the phone. I probably, probably wouldn't use the F-bomb when I'm telling her to get off the phone, depending on how many times I've told her to get off the phone. I probably will not use it. But I may yell at her and say, get off the phone and do your homework. See? And I would not expect to have DCF called over that. And, and, I, and I can... Did you ever call the fam Children and Family Services? No, I did not. Did you, Anthony, ever call Children and Family Services? Yes, but not how for How many that. times did you call Children and Family Services? I called once at her father's. According to you, how many times was Children and Family Services called on either you or your ex-wife? It was called four times. Okay, I... Ma'am? What's Rachel and, doing? And, and when I got home with Rachel the night from Daytona... The sheriff showed up at my house the next day for a safety check, and that wasn't the first time that they'd done that. And that came from the defendant's witness, or the plaintiff's witness. Okay. 
I you don't on, know that. Do you know that? Yes, they told me. They the told sheriff, you that he was a one who called? The sheriff told me that this guy... Why Jared, is the sheriff yeah. telling him that you're, you're... I don't know why the sheriff's not supposed to. Legally, by law, he's not supposed to. Oh, so to. I guess you just perjured yourself when you said you had never complained to... to no, uh, I have not complained to defects. I did Oh, you're right. I, it was the way I asked the question. You're right. I did call you're them right. concerning it because of some concerns and some of the things she said to me that night on the phone concerning her... Not Bed bugs? No. Not wanting to be in that house and cutting her... Threatening to cut herself. Okay. Is she getting counseling? Yes. Does she go to? Uh, I don't. Um, have, has, has he seen her since then? Or did they continue believe, to see her? I don't you? believe so. Are you seeing? Have you seen her since then? No. So the last time you saw her was when? When the police department in Daytona Beach picked her up. Welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey. Eleven years. So, guys, 21. She's 16. He says, "I ran away with her because I thought the dad was emotionally abusive." You buying this? I'm not buying it. I think that there's definitely other ways to deal with it. Like? Um, maybe like telling someone else, like the mom, other family members, instead of just taking Fair it. enough. What do you say? Um, I definitely agree with her because like running away with a girl is like very inappropriate. Well, does the age matter to you as a 21-year-old and a 16-year-old girl? Yes, that's a difference. It makes a difference. Yes, it does, yes. Yeah. Going inside the courtroom. Can I show you one more thing? Yeah. On uh, about the plaintiff's ability to tell the truth. Okay. Who is it who went in for the temporary restraining order? Mom? Mom? I did. Okay. In the temporary restraining order, you make the following allegations. Anthony came onto the premises and snuck, snuck into the daughter's bedroom twice. Yes. Did that happen? Yes, it did. And how do you know it happened? Uh, the, the reason why is because I went out to give her her eye drops the first time. And... When I got out there, I heard the door creak behind me. So I went, I bumped into him accidentally grabbing the door handle. When no. I, Darlene Sparks, told Anthony to leave, he got angry. Since I forbid him contact with my daughter, he has threatened to harm me and also my friend. How has he threatened to harm you? Oh, he threatened to hurt me if Rachel... We have, how? We what have, did we he have say? A we have a recording of him. Give me the recording. I just need to hear how he threatened to harm you. That's all. It's a simple question. That he was going to call DCF, the cops, and, he, he, and he was gonna also... get us on the street. Let's hear the recording. Yeah. This is Anthony Martin. You need to listen to me. You need to listen to me well. If I don't hear from Rachel by 3 p.m. today, I will have the FBI, the DCF, and the sheriff's department at your house, and Rachel will be put into a foster home. So I suggest you do as I say. You need to learn your place. Yes, you may be your mo her mother, but you have no right to control her. But guess what? I'm going to be calling the association on Monday, and you and Rachel won't have a place to live. Then you're going to have to come crawling to me for help. How old are you? How old are you? 21, ma'am. Where did you get this hubris? Where did you get this hubris? Are you visually impaired as well, ma'am? That yes. you're telling a mother and a daughter who are visually impaired that you're going to see to it that they're homeless and come crawling to you. Where, where does this come from when what we're dealing with is a minor? I, 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 I'm just, I'm floored. Well, you have a counterclaim against him for $564.54, expenses incurred looking for daughter. Yes. On account of what? On account that he, okay, ena a, he, he enabled the whole thing to happen. He got he went to LaBelle with her. Right, he but are you suggesting he kidnapped your daughter? No, ma'am. Right. I'm, so, I, know, I know she went on her own will, right. but she couldn't have gone without his help. No, absolutely. But that, you could say that of, of anybody. I mean, you could say I that understand. of any relationship, whether they're 16 or 20 or not. To, or you could say that of anybody. I understand. Um, so you can't get that counterclaim. Okay. And on your claim against against the two of them, you are suing for your bus ticket to Fort Myers, a hotel room for a night, cab fares, bus pass, food. Wouldn't you have eaten food where you were anyway? Costs more when you have to eat out because you're in a place that doesn't have a kitchen. Normally okay, and 30% interest. How do you figure? Because that they hearing was when? To, in October, right? The courthouse right? just told me to put a number down, so that's what I did. Okie dokie. I'm, I'm going to come up honest. with a number as well. Only that number's not going to be as high as you'd like it to be. Okay. That number is going to be zero, okay? Because here's the deal. When you are a concerned friend, 
you might have moral obligation to make that call to DCF on behalf of a minor. And then your job and interference ends. You do not tell the parents of a minor that they either listen to you or else they'll be homeless. Because I don't know what planet you are living on, but you are not the parent of the child. He gets to be the parent. She gets to be the parent. You do not, because of whatever Napoleonic complex you have developed, have the right to be her parent. You are not her parent. And I'm not clear what role the 44-year-old has in counseling a 16-year-old, but I'm pretty clear that it's not going to fly here. If there's something going on that they are abusing emotion, not that you don't like what they say. You don't like what they say doesn't cut it, okay? But if they're doing something that is inappropriate, illegal, immoral, hurts her well-being, that is what the Children and Family Services people are there for and the police are there for. And that's it. You stop after that. You don't turn around and try to take custody away of a minor, because that's a felony, okay? I'm not talking, see, if you were having sex with her, everything would be fine, because nobody could charge you with rape. That age spread of 16 to 21 is permitted in Florida, okay? But that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is you persuading a 16-year-old that she should be with you because you're a better parent, apparently. Are you out of your mind? You need to stay away from her, okay? On your claim against him, I've already explained, it's zero. And on his claim against you, for the reasons I've already explained, it's also zero. I don't find anything that was said there that wasn't actually in dispute. The fact that you won and didn't have to uh, abide by a permanent restraining order doesn't mean that somebody has to pay for your expenses. Good luck, folks. So this case ends up in a nothing, nothing tie. Mr. Martinson, the plaintiff, has just come out. If you'll step over here, sir. The judge just let you have it, uh, really. What are you thinking right now? You, what do you think what she just said to you? I don't agree with it. Okay. Um, and as you're far as leave I'm, the girl alone? As what far are you as I'm do concerned, now? if she continues to bring problems to my attention, then I will handle them accordingly. You're going to stay in touch with the girl? If, if she wants with to stay Rachel? in touch with me. If she can. It's up to her. If she can and she wants to, then it's up to her. All right. You may be back in court again very soon. Who, Who knows? knows? All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Strange case. Very strange. Here come the parents now. Mr. and Ms. Sparks. I know you're divorced, but you are the parents. <laughs> what, what's going to happen now? Where is, where is Rachel? Rachel home with you? Where she's, is she? a, she's at home with me. Okay. And what, how does she, we're how she feel about all of this that's going on? Uh, she says she was surprised. I don't know if she knew about it or not. Uh, yeah. I'm just happy that the judge saw what What's the truth? So she's. Do you think she's going to stay with you? Stay home? Can you? Can, I hope so. I mean, I can't. I can't tell you, you that know. for sure. You just don't. We're know going through gonna counseling. Happen. We're getting back in school and everything going. So we'll see. Well, that's good. That's good. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Sorry you. you're having all these problems. Okay. Thank it's, you. Thank it's you. a real mess. Thank okay. you. Okay. I think any parent could understand what a mess it is. Thank you very much, Harvey. What do you think? Okay, Doug. Look, it is not kidnapping because the girl agreed to go with the guy, but it is horribly wrong.